with its tropical climate, an endless forest and the ocean as a horizon. Costa Rica has been for some years the number one destination for nature lovers. They travel thousands of miles and come from all over the world to spend a few days of vacation here. <laughs> Rosalie and her friend Asa have been dreaming of this trip for a year and they are very touched because they are about to have a unique experience. It is half past noon. We can go and listen to this in the village. If not, there is acro yoga. Is that okay? Okay, let's go. In this jungle of Central America, they came to participate in a big hippie gathering. Once a year for one week, there are more than 10,000 people to meet here to get together and reach the ultimate ecstasy. so happy to be here. Amazing place. We're all so blessed. I love you, and I love you. Lots of love, lots of beauty, lots of life teeming everywhere. As soon as they arrive, Yoga and mystical music begin for the two French girls. Asa, the professional dancer, and Rosalie, a humanitarian executive, get into the groove. It feels like calm, composed, and present at the same time. Yes. The energy is there. In this new age atmosphere, the two friends are in their own element. Here, all the participants chose a green lifestyle pushed to the absolute limit. For the materials of the cabins, only wood is allowed. For the bathroom, it's not free and it's time. No more than five minutes per person. In the infirmary, Asa and Rosalie can find 100% natural remedies. Aloe vera, rub it on your burns. I'm not that burned, but it's a little red and I, it calms it, you know, it's cool. It is this return to their roots that the two came to look for in Costa Rica, a pioneer country in terms of ecology for 30 years. There is a genuine desire to make people aware of the importance and richness of all these natural resources in Costa Rica. To spend a week in this particular environment, it is recommended to save 600 euros, including camping. You smell so good, come here. It's Stephen Brooks. He organizes this annual gathering. If this 53-year-old American fell in love with Costa Rica, that is not by chance. The country abolished its army 70 years ago to avoid a military coup. Hippie at heart, the American was charmed. Are you looking for me? Yeah. What's up, baby? He then decided to create a new world a community of sharing in disruption with the consumer society. We want people to taste another way of living like they never have before, so that when they go home, they never want to go back to the old way, you know? Here we are, demonstrating another way to do things. People have never felt more in community and more supported and more loved. Here, Stephen Brooks is considered a spiritual guide. If he's that popular, it is because he has found the key to guaranteed success. For their first evening, this is the moment Asa and Rosalie have been waiting for. The twilight gives the kickoff of a huge rave party where all eccentricities are allowed with no limits. A kind of Burning Man Dream Beach version. The two French women are not disappointed with the trip. These are the last hours of the day. Everyone is on the beach. We dance, we party, we all have fun here. Until dusk, the two French girls and all the participants are engaged in all kinds of games and dances in this crazy atmosphere. The only motto is, let everything go. It's a bit unique, it's magical. All you need is the sun, a sea, and people. It's the simplicity of seeing everyone be amazed by it. It's absolutely fantastic. Asa and Rosalie are mesmerized. Thanks to this kind of event, 
Costa Rica is in the process of becoming the new home for hippies from all over the world. The country has many other assets. Designated a champion of the earth by the UN in 2019, this Central American country has achieved a remarkable feat, doubling its forest area in less than 30 years. It had been almost raised to the ground to make way for intensive agriculture through a reforestation plan. Today, it covers half of its surface area. This feature makes Costa Rica one of the first class on the world ecology podium, a source of pride for its young president, Carlos Alvarado. I am proud that my country has been rewarded for the efforts and work we do in the field of ecology. Between the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean, Costa Rica, meaning the rich coast in French, is, as its name implies, one of the richest countries in Central America. Half of its 5 million inhabitants live in San Jose, the capital. The millions of tourists who pass by every year don't usually stop there. They come here for its natural beauty. It's one of the most protected one in the whole world. It is the main resource of the country. Nature is our green goal. Some of them travel in a van to live some extreme experiences. Others travel across the world to get married in these sceneries. It is just paradise in every which way. Everyone spends their vacations here under the sign of the Pura Vida, the country's currency. It means living cool and enjoying every moment. In Costa Rica, some tourists put their lives at risk during secret spiritual retreats where they consume a drug that is only allowed here. I feel very con kind of a bit more confused today. I think my brain was being rewired, so there's a lot of confusion. Behind its eco-friendly image, is Costa Rica really the greenest country on Earth? We're not so sure. Its agriculture, one of the main local resources, is now a controversial issue. You can't go in. Costa Rica is the nation that uses the most pesticides in the world per cultivated hectare, in particular to grow pineapples of which it is the first world producer. The consequences can be terrible for the plantation workers. Look, I'm losing my nails. It's painful. How did Costa Rica become the most popular tourist destination? Is this green paradise really preserved? Investigation of one of the most beautiful gardens of Eden on the planet. On the Pacific coast, in the early morning. It's so beautiful. If I could wake up like that every morning with this little sound, the sound of the waves, the wind and everything. Laura and Raphael discover this wild scenery for the first time. These two 28 years old from Leon parked their van here suddenly last night. They are part of the 70,000 French people who visit the country every year. This is happiness. I love it. This bohemian trip has taken years to prepare for. They have saved 1,800 euros each to travel the country for three weeks. Plane tickets included. I want to experience this every day. It's too beautiful. The sand under your feet, the waves, and then everything here, it's just amazing. On board their van, the comfort is minimal a double mattress in the back and a kitchen area at the trunk. Shall I make you four? Yes. For these two friends, this means of transport is the best way to enjoy these wonderful landscapes and 1,300 kilometers of wild coastline. What they don't know is that these beaches are the hunting ground of a terrifying fauna. These local surfers will quickly warn them of the danger. When the tide goes down, you can see the crocodiles in the water. You must be careful and never swim alone. That's very dangerous. These aquatic monsters go down the rivers to come and catch the fish in the ocean. Swimming seems more complicated than expected. Are you going for a swim? I am afraid of the crocodiles. I am always a little bit afraid. Laura and Raphael came to get the most out of the thrills. In Costa Rica, they will be served. Come on, let's go. 
the country is a paradise for extreme sports lovers. For example, surfing, kayaking, canyoning. Even better, in the heart of the forest, this immense reserve shelters a unique attraction, a huge tree climbing course with one of the longest zip lines in the entire world. 1,600 meters of descent above the canopy, thrills and chills guaranteed. A challenge for the two adventurers. <laughs> okay. With all the equipment, I feel like it's getting more and more intense. I'm excited at the same time, I can't wait to find out what it's going to be like. Above all, I don't know if there are animals in the jungle. This is going to be amazing. For the two young women, the tension rises a notch. They will be slung 50 meters above the trees. I am ready. I am ready. A breathtaking minute of flying at more than 100 kilometers per hour above the forest. On arrival, the two friends cannot believe it. Pura Vida. Have you experienced these sensations? You see the trees, and then you have the feeling to enter the forest. When you arrive, you feel like climbing onto the trees. Is that it? It's not over yet. Final test, an even more terrifying attraction. The jump of Tarzan hanging on a liana. 50 meters of free fall. Oh my God. I get chills all over my body. I'm starting to get goosebumps. My hair is standing up. This time, Raffle is absolutely terrified. I think I'm going to cry. Under Laura's encouragement. You can do it, Raph. She takes courage with both hands. I don't think about anything. I don't think about anything. She throws herself into the air. After the great thrill is the great adventure. Costa Rica alone has 6% of the world's biodiversity. There are 169 protected areas across the country. A quarter of the territory. One of the most visited area is in the north. 70,000 hectares of mangrove, known as the small Amazon, accessible only by boat or small propeller plane. More than 1,000 species of wild animals live there peacefully. Come on, let's go. To explore this earthly paradise, Laura and Raphael call for Willis. Go ahead, be careful, please. This guy has been working here for 30 years. He knows mangroves like the back of his hand, a few strokes of the paddle, and already a first animal. Or just look under the leaf straight up. You got to see like a ball, gray, slot. Yes, I see it. It's moving, it's scratching now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's scratching. I can see. Sloth. This mammal, reputed to be the slowest in the world, is the country's mascot. Endangered of extinction, he is totally protected here. It is a unique opportunity for the two young women to see it in its natural environment. Now you see it. This is just the beginning. A Cody. A turtle. A caiman. Only rare terrestrial and aquatic animals, often impossible to approach. Here, French women are a few centimeters away from them. I am not reassured because we are within arm's reach of the caiman. In the next few hours, they will meet many species. Even the most unusual ones, like these howler monkeys, They really look like humans, the monkeys. You should never stay under monkeys. They can poop or pee on you. Always shut your mouth when you are under the monkeys. They're letting go. No toilets for wild animals. 
The two young women appreciate the immense privilege they have, rubbing shoulders with these animals in the wild. Costa Rica has made it its trademark. There is no zoo here. They are forbidden. That's what they like about it. Laura and Rafael feel like explorers. We love the feeling of being alone in the world, lost in the middle of this enormous forest with the animals. Discover this natural environment, all by yourself. It's a privilege. We're not in a zoo. We are in a wild national park. So you have to know how to remain humble and accept not always seeing what we want to see. When we see them, they are wild, and that is priceless. They owe this show to the strict rules imposed by the state to protect the ecosystem. Only 1% of the national park is open to visitors. Tourists enter at a low rate, only a few hours a day. This nature is our green gold. This heritage must be preserved and protected. This model, the opposite of mass tourism, is what Willis is proud of. It is also what allows him to live with the 1,500 inhabitants of his village, Tortuguero. Hello, welcome. Before the park opened 50 years ago, all lived in misery. Today, this remote area attracts 150,000 visitors every year. Restaurants, food shops, everyone benefits from this green gold. Hi, how are you? Willis and all the villagers like Milton, the souvenir seller, are content. I can earn between 8 and 40 euros per day. Tourism is the DNA of Tortuguero. If we didn't have it, we wouldn't exist. See you later. Since the 80s, Costa Rica has understood before all the world that ecology can bring a lot of money, reforestation, but also the development of renewable energies. The country produces almost all of its electricity from geothermal energy, wind power or solar power. A successful policy. Nature lovers are arriving from all over the world today, and some people come here for radical experiences. on the edge of the Pacific Ocean. This property in the middle of a tropical forest has been home to a bit unusual fitness center for several years. They practice a mix of shamanism, yoga and body relaxation through massage. The owner is Darren Mac Bratney. This American is the self-proclaimed therapist of the hard fringe of the hippie movement in Costa Rica. This morning, he is organizing the strange gardening session for his customers. Everyone comes here for a plant that is all the rage in this community. You just take your hand, you put it over like that. These are, this is the medicine right here. This shrub is the aboga. An African medicinal plant is known for its hallucinogenic effects. So dangerous that it is classified as a narcotic drug in Europe and the United States. Costa Rica is one of the few countries worldwide to allow its consumption. This plant is the most powerful plant medicine in the world. For one, it's like going to a psychotherapist 10 years in one night. What it's doing is, is it's resetting your body to the day you were born. Scientists have never recognized these therapeutic effects but Darren is a firm believer. For 20 years, he has made it his business. Dozens of tourists pay more than 4,000 euros every year to treat themselves a week of supposedly miraculous treatment. Okay, that's, that is a good area. Among them, Magdalena and Candy, these three friends who came all the way from England are looking for their bodily and emotional well-being. Their initiation begins with the planting of young shrubs, but the gardening part is gradually turning into witchcraft. It's a sacred, a sacred ceremony. ceremony. Candy brought her own things and a very surprising fertilizer, her own blood. This is my last month's menstruation bleed, and I've collected it to give back to Earth, to give an offering to Pachamama. 
Thank you for everything. Thank you for this beautiful human experience and everything that you do. In a few hours, Candy and her friends are going to consume a boga and have a confusing experience. Before this ceremony, a condition. Attendees should get rid of their clothes and paint their body and face. It feels very natural. You feel back to your roots, surrounded by nature. This is what a boga does to you. It puts you in touch with nature, your true self. Direction of this sauna is typical of the Amerindian people. It is heated thanks to its large stones that have been plunged into the fire. Inside, the temperature jumps to 90 degrees centigrade. The group invokes spirits and sings shamanic choruses. Oh, it's crazy, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Sweating so much, getting rid of so much crap, singing songs. You felt very tribal, like very tribal, you know? Back to like, back to like a million years ago. I never experienced anything like this, so that was, that was something um, out of this world. Tourists are now ready for the long-awaited ceremony. They're going to spend the night on these mattresses. Before they start, they have to drive out the evil spirits with incense. Darren, the guru, comes to reassure them before the giant leap into the unknown. Thank you. Have a good night. We'll be there for the support work. Okay? Everyone absorbs these little pills that contain a boga. Its consumption has already caused the death of dozens of followers in the world. Deaths caused by respiratory arrests. Nothing to be afraid of by the participants. Only Magdalena begins a prayer to give herself courage. My demons. I'm afraid of my demons. So I have no idea, to be honest. I'm just going in with the, with the heart of a child and with the spirit of a warrior. Little by little, the plant will plunge them into a state of semi-consciousness. At Darren's request, we film discreetly. This is a really big thing that they were doing. So if you guys come in, uh, you're in the middle of this very deep healing, it's going to do things to their mind that's not healthy at all. In truth, what he doesn't want to show are the dreaded effects of a boga, even when you don't die from it. The plant can cause epileptic seizures, paralysis, and even syncope. All night long, the participants will be haunted by mystical visions and hallucinations. Most of them go back and forth to the bathroom to vomit. These intense scenes will be repeated until early morning. Twelve hours after swallowing the pills, the three English are still under the influence of drugs. I feel very con kind of a bit more confused today. I think my brain was being rewired, so it was a lot of confusion. I didn't understand a lot of what was happening. It was a crazy, strange journey. I, I purged once quite heavily. I was sick. Candy, she is convinced that she has communicated with the Holy Spirit. It's surfing on the Milky Way out in the development. But ah, oh, it's been shooting stars fell down on me. God definitely exists. I'm really in the set. As for Magdalena, still in shock, she does not want to share her experience. In France, these self-improvement seminars are doomed by the authorities who describe them as sectarian. Here, the state prefers to ignore this. A dozen centers, like Darren's, have seen the light of day in recent years. Jungle. Dream beaches. And even volcanoes. Costa Rica alone offers a variety of spectacular settings. These landscapes don't only attract adventurers or hippies. In 20 years, the country has also become a paradise for lovers. Tourists travel thousands of kilometers to get married here. Anya, 
and her fiancé, Howie, are New Yorkers. They are going to celebrate their union in a few hours on the beach. Before that, they offer themselves an amazing photo session in a suit and wedding dress in the middle of the jungle. Hey, guys. What's up? Everything good? Nice to see you, brother. Nice seeing you. How are you doing? I'm great, and you? Not too exhausted? To get these glamorous shots, the two lovers called Thomas. This photographer is French and has lived in the country for 17 years. He made this wild nature his business and revenue. Okay, this one, look at me, grab it. Yeah. Okay. Thomas photographs no less than 50 weddings a year. He has a business that is booming in Costa Rica. Now Americans, those were Dutch people. We also had French people, and from Quebec as well, who are therefore French-speaking. We have Poles who have come as well. To attract his customers of the day, the Frenchman does his best. He knows the right locations. However, in Costa Rica, you have to earn to have a good photo. Perched at the height of two meters, the couple is not very comfortable. I add a bit of risk inside, it adds a bit of spice, it's quite interesting. A little bit of stress, a little bit of happiness, they are in Costa Rica. That photo is something the future spouses will never forget. This proves to our future children that we're adventurous and we like to take risks before we start settling down and telling them that they can't do anything fun like this. Let's go across the river now. The photo session with Thomas gradually becomes a wild expedition and Thomas pushes the two lovers to their extreme limits. His idea, photographing them in the water, fully clothed. Definitely an adventure. <laughs> Anya can say goodbye to her beautiful dress. The last detail that wasn't expected was these mojaras, small fish that appear to be harmless. But the fish go into attack mode. This species doesn't like to be disturbed, and it knows how to defend its territory. Anya has had enough. It is time to return to the mainland to prepare for the big ceremony. Lovers rented this big and luxurious property by the ocean with a pool and private golf course. They paid 35,000 euros to treat themselves to their wedding dream. It was not cheap. But back at home in the United States, they would have paid at least three times as much for the same standard. That's also what makes Costa Rica a favorite destination for many Americans who wants to get married. You know, I've come here probably close to 20 times now and, and I've just had a very good experience every time and every time there's something new to see and new people to meet and it's just, it's a wonderful feeling and I, I, I feel very happy and relaxed when I leave Costa Rica. I'm crying how you took it's me true, out of my though. country. It's true. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now let's get to the big moments they've been waiting for so long. The ceremony takes place on this beach facing the Pacific Ocean. Anya and Howie two Jews from New York, called all their loved ones to their wedding. Today, this kid from Queens gets to marry his dream girl. We've had so many incredible adventures, but our biggest adventure begins today. I promise to live fully and fearlessly in whatever life brings us as long as I have you by my side. Today, I give you my heart as your wife. <laughs> This moment of grace, Anya and Howie have been dreaming about it for years. Thomas multiplies the photos so that they remain engraved forever in their memory. It's beautiful, it's white sand, blue ocean, great sunset, can't ask for more for a beach wedding. It is just paradise in every which way. Like Anya and Howie, 170,000 foreigners choose Costa Rica annually as a wedding destination. With its lush nature, five-star hotels and sumptuous villas, 
Costa Rica as a country has succeeded in reconciling tourism and sustainable development. However, in Costa Rica, there are still exceptions. Remains of an era where the watchword was not yet ecology. Some places where mass tourism has developed with severe consequences for the environment. Like Jocko, a seaside resort in the south of the country, much appreciated by North American vacationers. Here, no rainforests, but fast food, souvenir shops and tourist buses are found. The city was transformed into Little California with a little bit of Costa Rican sauce added. That's good, food's good, beer's good, people are super nice, come on down. It's like at home? Yes sir, right like at home. Being right next to the playa, just hanging out, super relaxing, chill. Every year, 300,000 vacationers arrive in this city of 10,000 inhabitants, a bargain for retailers. These tourists are also responsible for the pollution of seawater. Victor Ars, one of the leaders of the environmental struggle in Costa Rica, is angry. With his wife Carla and his nephew Hector, he regularly comes to surf on this beach. However, scientific studies have shown that these waters contain a very high level of human excrement. Caco's water it looks clean like that. But in fact, it's contaminated. A lot of fecal residue was found inside. Do you surf through feces? I try not to think about it too much, but it's deplorable. We really need to protect our beaches. The cause is the inadequacy of the wastewater treatment system. In some places, the wastewater directly goes into the river, which merges with the ocean. This wastewater is full of excrement and household products from hotels and nearby shops for the tourists. The poorest come and wash there, at the risk of being contaminated by bacteria. Look, there it is. Do you see the water there? You see, it's a whitish color. It smells horrible. Disgusting. However, the authorities reacted. They built a few wastewater treatment plants. Unfortunately, due to the tourist boom, they were quickly overtaken. It is a direct consequence of mass tourism. Nothing has been planned. Jaco developed like a big city, but without the health infrastructures that should go with it. This is not the only subject that shocks Victor. Four years ago, the government has decided to commit themselves to ban single-use plastic objects by 2021 like bags, straws, or bottles. For the time being, we are far from the account. All you have to do is go to a supermarket in this seaside resort to see for yourself. Plastic, plastic, plastic packaging, plastic, plastic. Here, it is everywhere. All bottles are plastic. The observation is unequivocal. When shopping, the environmentalist has to deal with this. Why do you buy them if they're plastic? Do you see an alternative? There are no other options. What can I do? Should I stop eating? Plastic is all around us. I've eaten something right. If he's sickened by this, it is because he knows some parts of the packaging will end up in the ocean and further pollute the already polluted beaches of Jocko. So Victor decided to roll up his sleeves to save his city's ecosystem. He created an association of ecological surfers once a week, they clean up the dirtiest beaches in the region. Look guys, there's a good bunch of them. Two bottles, three bottles, a washing machine block, a shoe, and look here, a deodorant. It's heartbreaking, very disappointing. Surfers who are used to the area generally lend a hand. Where did you find this? It was on the beach. Yeah, the usual. These are bicycle or motorcycle tires. People throw them into the sea, and the current brings back all the garbage. In Costa Rica, waste sorting has been mandatory for 10 years. 5, 10, 15, 25. In my opinion, all of us collected at least 45 kilos today. Victor and all the volunteers who help him remove every year 
nearly seven tons of trash on the beaches. In Costa Rica, when it comes to ecology, things are even more serious. The other major environmental challenge is intensive agriculture. Coffee, bananas, or even pineapples. These crops are cultivated in huge fields, and they make big money. Pineapple alone generates $1 billion in revenue every year. Costa Rica is the world's largest exporter. Most of the ones that can be found in France in supermarkets come from here. That's our best typical local fruit, our treasure, very good and tasty, it is excellent. I get fresh ones every day. Except the good story ends here. In order to produce so many pineapples, there is no miracle growth formula. The country is the largest user of pesticides in the world per cultivated hectare. On average, six times more than in France. An incredible achievement for this nation that places ecology above all else. The impact on the environment and the health of the inhabitants is disastrous. In the small village of Paco Arredo, in the country's north, Karen can't sleep at night anymore. Look, the yellow plane is coming back. Every day in front of her house, this plane does the same aerial ballet. This plane is spreading pesticides on the plantations located next to her house. They arrive through there and fly over the houses, and then wind brings the poison back to us. The mother of the family is surrounded. All around her house, fields as far as the eye can see, all fed with pesticides. Karen is convinced that it was the chemicals that made her sick. She is suffering from bone cancer. She was diagnosed four years ago and is undergoing oral chemotherapy and struggles every day to survive. I feel tired all the time. I'm sweating a lot. And I have pain all over my body, especially my bones. At night, I wake up in pain to take my medication. It's very hard. Establishing the cause and effect relationship between these pesticides and her cancer is impossible. But Karen is sure of herself. The mother of the family points to the pineapple crops right behind her house. For years, she washed in this river that borders the fields. She then noticed that the used pesticides were pouring right into where she lived. I think chemicals have infected me from the pineapple plantation. There are no other possible explanations. Even my doctor told me that. Karen did not file a complaint because she couldn't afford a lawyer. Before the illness, she was a cleaner. Today, she no longer works and survives with her six children with a state allowance of 130 euros per month six times less than the average salary in Costa Rica. Thankfully, Etel, her son, is helping her out. He is a salesman in a clothing store. What did you bring? Chicken. Thanks. Come and let me kiss you, my son. Thank you. I think about her illness all the time. Every day I wonder if my mom will be with us the next day. It is very hard. With his meager income, the family knows that it's not much against multinational companies in the sector. In Costa Rica, several companies share the juicy pineapple business. Almost all of them use pesticides. One of the workers who works on one of the plantations admits this. Hello. In these fields, journalists are not welcome. We film on a hidden camera without revealing our identity. What is in this cistern right here? Chemicals, insecticides, and fertilizers. We put the product here. This is to make the plant grow faster. Among the products that are widely used in Costa Rica, some are prohibited in Europe. A farm worker has agreed to show us the damage pesticides can cause. He has only worked on a plantation for two years, and he is already a victim. 
I've lost my nails by handling herbicides and pineapple fields. They fell a year ago. They came off, I bleed. It hurt a lot. Look, you can see the blood underneath. Now people are always looking at my hands. They see that I am different. So I walk with my clenched fist. I feel ashamed and it's depressing. He wears gloves when he handles these pesticides, but they weren't enough to protect his hands. His case is not the only one. According to the unions, dozens of other workers have health problems. Why do farmers in Costa Rica use many pesticides to grow these precious pineapples? We wanted to ask them the question, but most of them refused to be interviewed. You are not allowed to enter. Who told you that? The owners. Only one boss agreed to speak to us by phone. He is European and has a large plantation in Costa Rica. According to him, to ensure good results, pesticides are necessary in this hot and humid country. Produce pineapple on a large scale, without chemicals. It's impossible. These are tropical countries. Everything grows, and mushrooms also grow Then faster. you have to protect yourself from insects, so you have to have insecticides. In Costa Rica, if you don't use it, you lose 99% of production. There is no secret. Today in Costa Rica, only 3% of pineapple production is organic a drop of water in this juicy business. Karen may see these tank trucks for a long time going around her house. Since she developed cancer, she put herself in God's hands. Every evening, she goes to the local church to find peace with God. Hi, Karen. How is it going? She is one of the most assiduous parishioners. Her faith, Baptist, she hopes will help save her. God can do great miracles. When I was in intensive care, he helped me survive. Karen continues to take her medication. For the moment, her health is stable. Like her, pesticide patients remain invisible in Costa Rica. Today, the state still doesn't recognize the link between their pathology and the massive use of chemicals products. When it comes to protecting the environment, however, the authorities are capable of small miracles, and they are ready to use the hard way with violence. At the other end of the country, a team of rangers is preparing for an unusual mission. These specially equipped men in uniform are from the environmental police. This is an Uzi, and a semi-automatic pistol. It fires 600 rounds per minute, and we have 20 bullet magazines. Their leader is this woman. Her name is Yemi. She and her men are armed to the teeth. It's for a challenging raid in a red light district. Good evening. All this is to protect prestigious guests who land on the beaches of Costa Rica once a year. Sea turtles. Each year, they come back to lay their eggs where they were born. At times, more than a million of them can be piled up. They're everywhere, in every square meter. They step on each other. There are so many of them. This phenomenon, which is almost unique in the world, is called the Arabata, the big arrival. Every year, amazed tourists come to enjoy this breathtaking spectacle. It's unreal. I've dreamt about this, you know, for years. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Yeah. Yemi and his men watch tourists from the corner of their eyes. If they are there, it is mainly for the poachers who try to collect the eggs of turtles because they are threatened with extinction. Good morning, gentlemen. Yemi has just spotted two suspects. 
Please come over here. You need to get off the beach. I don't want to see you here. Please, now you need to get out. The policewoman knows these two men well. In the past, they've already stolen eggs. As a result, they are forbidden to come to this beach. A court judged them. They face up to three years in prison if they are caught red-handed. There are possible buyers, though, because eating turtle eggs. It's a local tradition. Here, all you have to do is bend down to pick it up with a shovel. This beach is seven kilometers long. Yemai knows that she cannot control everything. There are lots of accesses like this. That is a street. Thieves pass by to poach quietly. We have houses that face directly onto the beach, so it's easy to get to. Poachers here are generally most active at night. One of them agreed to let us follow him on his egg hunt. We'll call him Antonio. He has been poaching here for about 15 years. People ask me for eggs, so I am poaching. It gives me pocket money, that's good. To avoid being spotted by the rangers, Antonio asks us to film without light with an infrared camera. As soon as we arrive on the beach, by feeling the sand with his feet, he already spots the first nest. It's easy, but you have to go quickly. There are guards everywhere. All right, those are good. There are guards there, I saw a light. We have to go now. In less than five minutes, Antonio harvested 20 eggs. He leaves to deliver them to a regular customer so as not to have too much on him in case of an inspection. Ma'am, eggs are here. Take them. They're great. It's really good. Here, take that. Okay, that's good. Come on, I have to go. For this first bag, Antonio just won two euros. It may seem little, but it's just the beginning. Some evenings, I can make 45 euros thanks to smuggling. I don't think about turtles. With that, I'll be able to buy myself a drink. That's all that matters. The turtle is my bread and butter. That's all that matters. The rest, I don't care. In this country, where the inhabitants earn only 20 euros a day, turtle egg trafficking is good business. To break this black market, the authorities have found another solution that might seem surprising. The following day at 10 a.m., in broad daylight and plain sight, these residents will also cross the red line that protects the sea turtles and collect the precious turtle eggs. First, we search with our tiptoes. Then you touch the sand with your heel. That's it. I felt something. We're going to dig it. It may seem surprising, except that they have every right to collect and sell these eggs. Don Jeremias and his friends are part of an association with an exclusive license granted by the state. You have to dig to get to the bottom. That's where it's the freshest, and the eggs are fresher too. I am rarely wrong. I have become a champion at finding eggs. I'm going to show you how to eat them here. Like that, nature. It's delicious, it gives strength, and it is a blessing from God. The collection takes place about 10 days a year. All members of the association are invited, and the number of eggs collected is limited. It's a unique situation in Costa Rica. The aim is to enable the inhabitants to perpetuate their ancestral traditions, but above all, to break the black market by selling them at low prices. Great girls, it's full. There are a lot of them this year. Helene is a biologist. She endorses this pickup because it doesn't affect the development of the species. In fact, during the Arabatas, there are many turtles that lay eggs on top of each other. And thus, 
destroy their own eggs. A lot of eggs are laid. As a result, some of them died, crushed. An arabata can last 15 days. The turtles that arrive the last crush the eggs of the first. It's the same thing every time, and we lose all that. For members of the association, it is also very advantageous. The money from the sale of eggs is redistributed to them, a few hundred per year for each person. Today on this beach, turtle births are constantly increasing. A show that changes every year with Don Jeremias. Look, she has just been born. Poor girl, we help her get out of the hole. She can't do it. If she stays there, the other mom is going to smash her unintentionally. It happens all the time. She was lucky, this little turtle. When I see babies reaching the water, it means so much to me. It makes my heart very warm. We humans should be inspired by that. They are so innocent. It's a very fragile balance. You have to be careful with it. On average, only one turtle out of 1,000 that is born here reaches adulthood. Like all the others, if it survives, it will return to laying eggs in Costa Rica in 10 years. Thanks to the efforts of the state and of all the inhabitants, the country has now become a refuge for more than a dozen species on the verge of extinction.